Peace be with you, and welcome again to Marian Moments. This is a special episode, as we are now in the season of Advent, which has a distinctly Marian character, and it is also the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, an immensely important and miraculous Marian apparition from the 16th century in Mexico that caused the conversion of millions to the Christian faith in that country, as well as throughout all the Americas. But perhaps more on that later, this video will be about the rosary. Many of you have probably heard of this traditional Christian prayer, but you may be wondering where it comes from and why it is important. Now, I don't intend to explain everything about the rosary, there are already so many wonderful videos and articles that do that much better than I could. And this is not going to be an instructional video either about how exactly to pray the rosary. I'll include some links or other videos that can help you with that. Simply put, this video will just be a brief exposition of some of the more important elements of the rosary and an exhortation for all of us to renew our love for this beautiful prayer and to pray it well and often. To begin, let's review some basic truths about the rosary. First of all, the rosary is considered a devotional prayer, as opposed to a liturgical prayer or a sacrament, which means that it is not technically obligatory for the Christian faithful, but rather is left to the discretion of each person's spirituality and devotion. That being said, its importance has been so emphasized in centuries of the Church and by Our Lady herself in her various apparitions that we would almost have to have like a really good reason not to pray it as Catholics. So number two, after the fact that it's a devotional prayer, the rosary is also a meditative prayer, which means that while our lips go through the various spoken prayers that are repeated throughout, our minds are focusing on what we call various mysteries of the life of Jesus and of his mother, which includes imagining those events and meditating upon what they might also mean for our lives. This is an important point because, sadly, many people see the rosary as simply a vocal exercise and do not penetrate to the heart of its meaning. Now, these mysteries are divided into four sets of five of what we call decades, in other words, groups of ten Hail Mary prayers, which are designated as follows. First, you have the joyful mysteries, the Annunciation, the Visitation, the Nativity of Jesus, the Presentation of Jesus in the Temple, and the Finding of Jesus in the Temple. Next comes the Luminous Mysteries, which are, first of all, the Baptism of Jesus by St. John the Baptist. We have, in second place, the Wedding Feast at Cana. After that, the Proclamation of the Kingdom, the Transfiguration, and the institution of the Most Holy Eucharist. The Sorrowful Mysteries come next, which are the Agony of Jesus in the Garden, the Scourging at the Pillar, the Crowning with Thorns, the Carrying of the Cross, and Jesus' Death on the Cross. And finally, the Glorious Mysteries, the five are the Resurrection, the Ascension, Pentecost, or the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Assumption of our Blessed Mother Mary, and Mary's coronation in last place in heaven. So those are the mysteries of the rosary. As you can see, the subject matter of the rosary is profoundly rooted in the scriptures. And in fact, Pope St. John Paul II, who said the rosary was his favorite prayer, and who was the one who added the luminous mysteries to the rosary, he said in an apostolic letter from 2001, quote, The rosary, though clearly Marian in character, is at the heart a Christocentric prayer. 
In the sobriety of its elements, it has all the depth of the gospel message in its entirety, of which it can be said to be a compendium. It is an echo of the prayer of Mary, her perennial magnificat for the work of the redemptive incarnation which began in her virginal womb. With the rosary, the Christian people sits at the school of Mary and is led to contemplate the beauty of the face of Christ and to experience the depths of his love. End quote. So again, as we saw in the previous video, there is no competition here. The more we honor and draw close to Mary, the more she leads us to her divine son. So the rosary is, first of all, a devotional prayer. We saw, we saw how it's a meditative prayer. And thirdly, it is a powerful prayer. Don't ask me exactly why or how, but there's something special in these beads. Not that it's a magic trick or anything, but Jesus and Mary have made it very clear over the past thousand years of the rosary's development that they have a special love for this prayer and grant powerful graces to those who employ it. In fact, the development of the rosary is a bit mysterious in itself. As many things in the church, it develops slowly and organically over time as a result of many different influences. It has been traced to practices of early Christian ascetics who used knotted cords or stones to count their prayers, and also to the practices of monks who recited all 150 psalms and wanted to give lay people a way to unite their prayers to the monastery in a simpler way. Many saints also throughout the past millennium have been avid promoters of this devotion, and even the Hail Mary prayer itself, which didn't reach its current form until relatively recently, has deeply biblical roots, drawing from the angel Gabriel's words to Our Lady at the Annunciation, as well as those of her cousin Elizabeth at the Visitation. Our friend St. Louis de Montfort says, again from his treatise True Devotion, quote, Few Christians, however necessary, excuse me, few Christians, however enlightened, know the real value, merit, excellence, and necessity of the Hail Mary. It was necessary for the Blessed Virgin to appear several times to great and enlightened saints to show them the merit of it. So, the rosary is no joke. Popes throughout the centuries have showered it with indulgences and encyclicals. Many associations and confraternities have sprung up around it. And Mary herself, as we said, on many occasions during her numerous apparitions and messages, has urged the faithful to pray the rosary diligently, even daily. We don't have time to go into the subject of Marian apparitions here, that will likely be the topic of a future video. But we can say that particularly Our Lady of Fatima was insistent on this point, asking that we pray the rosary every day for peace in the world. And we can see how relevant that still is today. There are also multiple promises associated with those who say the rosary, often connected with St. Dominic and Blessed Alain de la Roche. All this to say that the rosary is extremely powerful. Through the intercession of Mary in your daily rosary, Jesus will convert hearts, comfort those in need, stop wars, bring peace and healing to your family and to your heart. We can think of it, as, as is sometimes said, as a crown of roses that we give to Mary, each of our poor prayers being like a flower we offer her and God will take our tiny offering and turn it into something amazing. Which brings us to a fourth point about the rosary, that it is a simple prayer. You don't need to have a college degree or be a rocket scientist to figure it out. Anyone can pray it, and it is accessible even in times when our minds might be weary or our nerves all frayed out. I can't tell you how many times in my own life I have found comfort in the familiarity and the repetition of going through the beads one by one, even on a walk or in the car. 
it's almost like as we do this, that we slowly let our hearts be drawn into the rhythm of Mary's immaculate heart. And we find the peace and joy that we so long for. True, some people take issue with the repetitive nature of the rosary, citing Jesus' words from the Sermon on the Mount against the pagans who, quote, babble with their many words. To such people, it might be important to point out that Jesus here was speaking of those who use vain repetition, thinking that it is because of their many words that God will listen to them. Because Jesus himself actually used repetitive prayer. For example, in his agony in the garden, when he prayed to his father, as well as the repentant tax collector in Luke 18, who prayed the same thing over and over, and even the what are called the four living creatures in heaven from the book of Revelation in chapter 4, they repeat day and night, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. So it's something that's not necessarily bad to engage in repetitive prayer, as long as we remember that it's not the quantity, but the quality of our prayer that counts. So the rosary expresses our devotion. It is a meditative prayer. It is a powerful prayer and a simple one. I guess we could also add as a fifth point, that the rosary truly is a beautiful prayer. If we call to mind the simple faith of millions around the world who turn to the rosary, mothers and grandmothers for their wayward children, soldiers going into battle, priests and family members at the bedsides of the sick or the dying, prisoners engaged in repentance for their crimes, we see a beautiful collage of those who have nowhere else to go, like St. Peter, who told the Lord when he asked if he would leave Jesus too, Lord, to whom else shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So let us too, with faith-filled devotion, turn our hearts to Jesus in the rosary, as we sit in the company of his mother, who teaches us little by little how to love more and more each day, and ultimately to let ourselves and those for whom we pray be drawn into the blaze of everlasting life. Now, if you like, we can pray one decade of the rosary together, and I offer up this decade for all the different intentions that you may have in your hearts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The first joyful mystery of the rosary is the Annunciation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. Our Father, St. John, pray for us. And Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. God bless you.